Hello there, I'm GB Vegas, and this is how to create a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 24. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at creating this intro scene with some camera animation. We'll create the sequence, we'll add some music and a couple of subtitles as well. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and indeed everything else I upload to my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now we have this creepy, eerie scene and it's all done mainly via post-processing. So there is one key aspect of uh, what we're going to develop in this scene in particular because ultimately we need some kind of story to feed into our game itself. And the idea that uh, we're going to go with, at least for this tutorial, you don't necessarily have to follow it, is that we're in the woods, uh, we walk around, we're investigating something, we come across a shed and you know we end up being bashed on the head or something and end up in the game. So to do all that what we're going to do is bring in a like a shed or a, a kind of a cabin or something here. So first off let's head to the asset store and in the asset store I do know that there is a nice little uh, asset that we can use which is free again you don't have to if you don't want to you don't have to follow the exact same as me you can change it if you want to but these are the mechanics what we're going to go with so I'm going to head to the old asset store simply because I prefer the layout I feel it's much easier to use uh, I'm just going to type in the shed and click on free only and it is this one right here and I quite like this I think it's going to suits us just fine because everything in it is pretty much as we need it uh, so we just import download whatever uh, i've chosen this on my own you know i've not received any money for promoting this in any kind of way this is something that i've chosen because i like it and i think it fits well with what we're trying to do here so once we have that as i already have right here somewhere well, i did have it there we are the shed so i'm going to bring that in right there so there's our shed drag and drop into the scene, providing Unity doesn't go a little bit silly. There we go. Okay, so it's in the scene. Uh, let's rotate it so as it fits a little bit more accurately. Probably about there. In fact, I'm going to turn post-processing off just for now so we can see things just a little bit better. Uh, it looks like it needs turning completely around because I want it facing this way towards us here. So let's turn around. To make sure we have everything right let's bring it up to about there there that should do so we can see the grass kind of growing through it a little bit that adds a neat little effect so it's like it's growing through the bottom planks again it's up to you if you want that if you don't it's your game at the end of the day guys uh, okay so we have an asset ready so our camera is going to take a route through round here, round through the trees, like it's investigating and whatnot. So we need to get our camera into its starting position. And I'm going to say the starting position is, let's say, here. So let's bring our camera to the start. Not the terrain, <laughs> the camera. Uh, camera. Unity is being very painful today, painfully slow. So let's bring it over here into our starting position. And it's looking in the direction we want, which should be this way. So I'm going to start this as well with a fade in. And we've already created a fade in, so I'm going to save our scene and head to our original scene, which is scene 001. Now, the great thing about this is once assets or objects or whatever you want to call them within the scene have been created, we can very easily transfer that information to another scene. So if we take our canvas and event system from here, copy them, head to our intro scene, we can quite literally paste them straight there. So because at the moment all we want is a couple of things, we don't need to have everything here. For example, we don't need to have the action key because we're not going to have any control in this scene. It's going to be purely animation driven, so we can get rid of that. We can get rid of the action text and the crosshair and the extra crosshairs. We do need the fade in, 
we're going to create a fade out as well. Uh, text box we are going to use because we're going to have subtitles. And we don't need any flash and we don't need the ammo panel either. So if we press play now, we should be able to see that our fade in works just fine. Perfect. So now let's create the animation trail, which will allow us to control what we see. So let's head to our animations folder and let's take our main camera. Let's go to animation and click on create. And I'm going to call this one intro anim, just nice and easy. And then let's press the record button. So frame zero, let's set our first keyframe. So we're going to use the position up here. So we can copy that, paste it in, and it should turn it red. Perfect. Same again with the Y. Let's set that one and the Z. I also want to do the rotation as well. So if we type one and type zero, wherever it should be, just make sure it does turn red because that means it's setting that first keyframe. I'm sure we've spoke about it before. Uh, 180. And same with the Z, let's put that as zero. So there's our first keyframe set. So we need to establish now where our camera is going to go. And there are different ways of creating cutscenes, but ultimately I feel this way gives me, as a developer, more control. And I feel it gives me much more ability rather than cheat and do it the quick and easy way using any additional tools. If you want to use additional tools, that's absolutely fine. The end result is still going to be the same. We're still going to have an animated camera with a cutscene. So let's move to a different position after about five seconds. So let's head this way to about here. So after five seconds, which is 300 frames, because we're in 60 frames a second, let's have our camera here and rotated ever so slightly. Now, as we come down into this section, I want to rotate the camera a little bit more so we kind of look back on ourselves. So this one is going to be over the course of probably 15 seconds. So 15 seconds is 900. So which means that that's going to be 1200 frame. And let's move this over here. So I'm going to put that as zero. So we absolutely shape, bring it this way over to about here probably a little bit further i think yeah maybe about there and over the next five seconds i'm going to rotate this way and bring the camera to somewhere around here so that makes 1500 1500 frame i should say so we're going to rotate the camera probably to about there and walk down this way so you probably guessed by now we're going to end at the shed so i'm not going to take too much longer to kind of bring ourselves around you take as much time as you need so i'm just gonna you know get to the get to the point of this bring it to here with a, a rotation probably to about there maybe there and let's say five frame two five oh oh we are over here, rotated again. And obviously we can see the shed at this point. So let's say by the 3000th frame, we've brought our camera to here, maybe looking this way a little bit. And by 3500, we are here, looking back that way. By 4,000, we are somewhere here. Starting to look okay. It seems a bit out of the ordinary and a bit odd looking at the moment, but believe me, once we play this animation, it will look kind of cool. So by frame 4500, we're going to be looking into the shed. So let's turn that way. These are all ideas that you can use and you can interpret them in any way. So we're here. So then by frame, let's say 5500, we've come 
in to here and turn to face this way. So by frame 6000, we are over here. And then let's say frame 6600. Uh, let's have a look, scroll across here. So frame 6600, we turn ourselves all the way around and that will be the end of our cutscene. So the reason I've done that is because we're going to get attacked and hit on the head with something and we end up in our next scene. So let's stop that. And before we put this to the test and play it through, I'm actually going to bring in some audio, which is going to be used. So in the music folder audio, I'm going to bring in this. And you can get this on the website. Head over there, downloads and assets, survival horror tutorial number 24. And you can use this music as you see fit. It's, it's yours to do what you want with. Uh, use it in the game if you want. It's up to you. Uh, so I'm going to attach it to the main camera simply because I want the music to play the whole time. So main camera. And I'm going to play on awake. And I may turn the volume down to probably 0.5. Leave the pitch as it is. Main camera is set. Uh, last thing we'll do is let's find the actual animation. Uh, intro anim. And I'm going to untick loop. We only want it to play once. Now let's press play and see how this all looks. If we notice something problematic, we can change it quite easily. So the lighting may need a change, which is something we can easily deal with. So far, so good. Yep, I'm happy with it so far. It doesn't look like it's intersecting any trees or anything. So we should come down this way and we should go straight down here. Obviously the light is definitely going to have to change because it's kind of distorting what the game is about. Or you could leave it as it is. It's, it's entirely up to you. As I keep saying, it's your game. So we're investigating the woods. Just keep that in mind. This is an investigation. The woods. There's a cabin. All the way through here. I think we may need to light up the cabin, but that could just be a quick little point light in there. So far, so good. Yeah. Inside the cabin. Yeah. So you could just imagine we'll have some voice and have some subtitles and have all kinds of things going on. Let's increase the directional light maybe a little bit. So we can see. And then bang. It would end there. So that is how that actually worked out quite well. So you can see how we've made that cutscene occur really easily. And like I say, you can use different tools if you want to. I like doing it the manual way because it makes me have more control. And I feel it as a developer, it's easier for me, but not everyone is the same as me. So next tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're going to put in all our UI for it. Uh, we'll have you know some information on the screen, like this is such such wood on this date and uh, have some subtitles for our story. So we'll build that up. We'll get some voice in there. We'll link everything together as well. So as everything flows neat and tidy through the game. So guys, until that next tutorial, you build this section, you make it look good, creepy, whatever, and we'll see you next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.